Welcome to 7.3. Use similar right triangles. Now this can get complicated. I'll tell you up front. It can get kind of confusing, but um, let me lay it out for you. Listen carefully and hopefully my color coding will have it make sense. And what we need to know for the midterm is really focused down here. Okay, so just hang with me up here. Uh, I want you to understand the basis for it, the foundation, why it is we're able to do this, but then I'll, I'll show you the trick at the end, and we will practice this in class enough so that it'll, you should be able to use it sufficiently for uh, the midterm. <clears throat> and I wish we had time in class to be actually able to construct these things and put our hands on them and see how it works, but uh, Regrettably, we don't have that. So what they're saying here is we're talking about using similar right triangles. Similar, you will remember, same shape, but different size or proportional size in particular. And our essential question is how do I use properties of the altitude of a right triangle? So what does the altitude have to do with similar right triangles? Well, you will remember altitude your little plane up here on the vertex and the altimeter of a plane uh, measures the distance straight down to the earth perpendicular uh, distance and when you create this out when you draw the altitude you actually have now three different triangles you see you have this larger blue triangle on the outside and then your medium green to the left and then your baby uh, red on the outside. I should put that blue, huh? Baby blue. But uh, baby red on the, not outside, but on the inside over here on the right. And so there's three different right triangles. This is a altitude, so therefore it's perpendicular to this uh, base. So this is a right angle, and of course on the right angle over here. So three different right triangles. And it turns out it will always be this way that these three triangles are similar to each other. So let me show you. Let's take this green triangle, right triangle, and let's take it out and just slide it over uh, here. That's what I'm doing. And then let's take this red triangle and slide it on over here. So here are your three different um, right triangles that come out of when you uh, draw an altitude, you have the larger blue on the outside, you have your uh, medium green on the left here, and then your smaller red. And now let's take these three triangles and put them in the same orientation. So this blue, let's keep that in the same orientation, just slide it up, translate it up over here. So I see I have A, B, C, so I still have that same orientation, A, B, and C. But with this green, I want to rotate this in such a way, and I think that's all I need to do. No, I think I need to rotate it and then uh, reflect it uh, in order so that it's in the same uh, orientation as this one. Easiest way to do that is, so, so remember what I do? Remember we did this for um, uh, the proofs and uh, uh, proving that two triangles are congruent, we would separate them and draw them in the same orientation. So same idea. Let's take this large uh, right triangle and draw a medium-sized one in the same orientation and then draw a small one in the same orientation. And then now I need to figure out where my letters go. And the easiest way to do that is to look at the right angle. So that's going to be a D in this particular case. So you got the D from over here. okay? And then look at the smaller side. That's typically where I start. The smaller side. Um, and here, the smaller side goes out to uh, point C. So therefore, the smaller side goes out to point C. And the remaining um, vertex is A. So now I can be able to get corresponding sides of these similar triangles. And that enables me to do proportions with it. Let's do the same thing with the red. And I guess I have to uh, rotate this guy and then reflect it to, and then translate it over to put it up here. But again, start with your right angle. And uh, that is uh, the vertex is D. My short, or going down my short side 
is out to Bravo, B, so it comes out to here, and the other one is C. So you will need to draw that same thing when you do these problems uh, down here. In fact, let's just jump straight into it. No reason to, I don't think, show you. Uh, I guess we could. Here, here's an example in the textbook of what we are talking about. And they have a swimming pool. This portion of the swimming pool is a right triangle. And in order to figure out what the height of, or depth in this case, uh, of this uh, portion of the um, pool is, we want to figure out this uh, H uh, here. Uh, what we can do is draw, this is an altitude. And so again, therefore, I have three different uh, triangles. and. Uh, they have okay so here's your bigger one that's your bigger one there and so they brought that orientation down here and these lengths from that and then here's the medium one and here is your right angle that's at m so that matches here's your right angle now again see what i did was i took this larger one and then took that same shape and brought it over and shrunk it down a little bit to the medium and then shrunk it down even farther to make the small, but it kept it in the same orientation. So now I just need to bring over these uh, vertices, the letters, onto it. It doesn't come just like this, um, but uh, one at a time. So here's the right angle, that's M, and as I follow down the short side, uh, shortest side, that is, uh, goes down to T. So here's my shortest side, go down to T, and the other remaining one is, is R. And with uh, my small triangle here. Uh, my right angle is M. Going down the short, which is going to be going over this direction, is S. So there's my short to S. And the remaining uh, vertex is T. Now I can take these lengths here and bring those over onto my diagram. And it's a whole lot easier, you see, to be able to figure out uh, the kind of proportion I need to be able to solve for uh, what I want. So in this case, I want to solve for h. So here is the height, which is this distance uh, from your diagram. And in order to solve for h, let's do our proportion. So h and fraction bar equals fraction bar. So h corresponds, you can see, very easily to, to this side. But I do not know what that length is. But I do know what the length of this other dude over here, the big guy, is. So h over 152 h over 152 and now what I need to do is to find two other corresponding sides of these same triangles that I can fill in numbers over here so these two sides are corresponding to each other but I only have the 64 I only have the length of this one I don't know what the length of this other one is over here uh, so that's not going to help me but I do have another pair of corresponding sides from these two triangles and let me make sure I get this right. I almost put the 165 up on top here because I was just thinking that I should do the bigger one. But no, wait a second. My H, I started with H. That's the small. So small on top of big. Small on top of big. So therefore, I want this small uh, 64 here on top of the big 165. There it is. Okay, so there's my proportion. And now I can solve it by doing cross multiplication. So 165 times h, uh, that's what they have here, 165 times h equals 154 times 64. And then I divide both sides by uh, 165, and the answer is h equals approximately 59. So this is approximately 59 uh, inches, which is not too much. What is it, 12 inches per foot? So I guess that's about four feet, right? So, um, yeah, so that this uh, length here is uh, 59 inches, and plus you'd add also the, the 48 inches on top uh, there to get the entire depth uh, of your pool. So you see how that works? So spreading it out, spreading those triangles out, enables us to find uh, corresponding sides in order to create proportions to be able to solve for the side that we want. And so that is what I'm asking you to do here is, and I've already done this for you, here's your big triangle. This has to be an altitude. Remember, this only works 
when, oh, almost lost my book, only works when uh, this is an altitude. So, and yes, I realized that, hey, wait a second, I thought altitudes went from a vertex straight down. Well, if you were to orient this around, here's your vertex, and now it's coming straight down. The main point is that it's perpendicular to its opposite side, and it is perpendicular. Okay, so there's your altitude, and so here's your medium triangle, and here's your small triangle. So I'm taking the same orientation of the big triangle and making it a little bit smaller, and then make it even, even smaller. And what I did here was just figure out, I did not bring over the um, vertices, I could if I wanted to, but I just brought over the, uh, the length of the sides. So this is the medium one, and here is the small, so here's the medium triangle, but here's the small side, right? And so that side, the small side is X, so here's my small side of X. And the other uh, other leg, I do not know uh, what that is right now, but I do know the hypotenuse across from this uh, right angle, uh, the hypotenuse of the medium triangle is uh, four. So there's my four. Now, let me tell you how I got this. Uh, this length here, this other leg on the medium triangle, notice that this entire length is five, and I'm going to call this dude H. <clears throat> oh, H, where did I get that from? Oh, that letter's H. But what I mean to say is Y. These random letters pop in my brain. Uh, so this is Y. If I call this Y, then this length uh, here is going to be 5, take the entire length, minus Y. So this is going to be 5 minus Y. So that's why I labeled that as 5 minus Y. And... Yep, okay. yeah, yeah, it's fine. Uh, actually, I did not need to do that. If you wanted to, you could do that. Uh, for the midterm, though, they will not require you to come up with something like that. But I just want to make sure you know where that's coming from if you see that in the, the textbook. And then here's the small triangle. And here's my small triangle. The smallest side uh, is Y. So I'm labeling that as Y. I just made up that uh, variable. The hypotenuse of the smallest triangle is 3, and what I want to find is x, okay? So now what I do is I look for, here's my, here's an x here, and here's an x there. And I want to be able to find a uh, proportion with another triangle that only has other numbers. So I could do x corresponds to uh, y, that's not going to help me, that's two variables. Uh, x does correspond to 3, that works, so I could do x over 3, but do I have another pair of sides that are corresponding that I know the length? Hey, in fact I do. I do have that right over here. Hmm, there's another solution here. That's not the one that I originally chose, but uh, what I could do is say x, what did I do here? Okay, here it is, x over 3, all right, x over 3, these two sides correspond to each other, and then these two sides correspond to each other. x over 3, so I'm doing right over left, uh, equals uh, right, which is 4, over left, which is 5. Okay, so I could use that proportion, and to be able to solve for x, if I did, here's my cross multiplication, so 5 times x equals 3 times 4, uh, let's just do it out here, 3 times 4, okay? Um, the one I did over here, where did I get that one from? Oh, I, I got it from here. I got, I, so instead of using this x, what I did before was to use this x over here. So I could do x over 5 minus y, but that's another variable. I don't want to use that variable. I only want one variable. So these two sides correspond to one another. So x over 4, here is, here it is, x over 4. And then do I have another pair of sides that correspond to each other? And I do, that are only numbers. Yep, so 3 over 5, and 3 over 5. And notice that when I cross multiply uh, this, what I ended up doing here was trying to solve it by multiplying both sides by 4 to remove the, the 4. You could do that. In fact, let me show you if, uh, if you do it that way. Instead of cross multiplying it, instead of saying 5 times x, 
um, what you could do is just multiply both sides by 4 in order to clear the denominator here to solve for x. This is just a different way of solving a uh, proportion. And if I did, then this is like a 1 underneath that. 4 divided by 4 is 1. So these guys cancel out. And I'm left with x equals, and this is a 1 underneath that. So 3 times 4 is 12 and divided by 5. So my answer, hey, I'm just doing the whole problem for you, man. What's the deal with that? Uh, so x equals 12 over 5. On the right-hand side, if I was to use this, use this other proportion that I um, began, then after I cross multiply, I would divide by 5. These would cancel out, and I have x equals 12 over 5. Hey, look at that. I get the same exact answer. So again, it's very helpful to be able to spread things out and make sure they're in the same orientation. Make sure that you have the correct lengths of sides and then find a proportion that enables you to find the variable that you want and uh, with only numbers. So I'm gonna cut you loose and have you do number two on your own. And so go ahead and pause the video and, and do that. Here's your medium triangle, so this guy medium, and here's your small triangle. So just try to do that on your own. And then let me introduce you to this last concept here. Using this principle, using this principle that we, we see here, uh, what we can do is uh, we, they, you can identify, uh, there's certain patterns, let me say it this way, there's certain patterns that will work all the time. And when we ha are using an altitude, so here is an altitude, uh, we can um, label that altitude as a geometric mean. What is a geometric mean? Well, the geometric mean of two numbers, those numbers being A and B in this particular case, is a positive number X such that you can create this proportion. So here is your geometric mean. Geometric mean is this X that shows up twice in the diagonals across from each other in a proportion. Okay, and so this four in an altitude of a right triangle uh, is a geometric mean of two and eight. Two is the part to the left and eight is the other part to the left of the hypotenuse. So you just gotta get accustomed to this pattern. Altitude as a geometric mean is um, is the geometric mean of these two parts of the hypotenuse. So being that four is your geometric mean, it shows up twice on the diagonal of your proportion, and uh, four is the diagonal, is, is the geometric mean of these two parts of hypotenuse, which are two and eight. And now it makes it easy to be able to solve for, for example, if you had X, um, if you n did not know one of these numbers, now uh, you could solve for it using the other numbers. And we'll practice this in class. Uh, here's another geometric mean. If you are using a leg, so here is a leg of this uh, right triangle, then uh, the leg is a geometric mean of the near part and the whole of the hypotenuse. The near part and the whole of the hypotenuse. So two, as your geometric mean, uh, is the geometric mean of the near part, which in this case is one, and the whole, which is four. Okay, we'll talk about this more in class and uh, practice it enough times on the kind of problems that will be on the midterm. We'll get you ready. Hang with me. All right, hope that was helpful. Look forward to seeing you.